Good evening. Thank you for joining me. My name is Meredith and I'm a mentor in the hub at the Grays Lake Area Public Library. Tonight's program is Art with Flair, where we will be painting with acrylic paints. Uh, step by step, we'll be painting this picture of acorns. If you have registered and you've not yet received your Take and Make kit, please let the hub know and I'd be happy to put one together and uh, notify you when it's ready to pick up at the library. We have curbside service available. This YouTube video will be available on the Grays Lake Library's YouTube channel, and you may watch it as often as you like, and pause it, or fast forward, or however you prefer to watch it. Uh, I will be walking through the painting step by step, um, but please don't feel you have to follow every step exactly the way I do it, or that you have to follow all the pictures, because um, this is your painting and you should paint it the way you like. Be creative, use your colors. If there's something, an element in the picture that you don't want to include in your painting, don't paint it. Uh, if there's things that you'd like to add, go ahead and add it. And if you'd like to share your painting, your finished painting with us, we'd love to see it. Just uh, download it and send it in an email to thehub at grayslake.info. All right, let's get started. Okay, we'll get started by covering the supplies that you'll um, need to do this painting. The instructions call for these colors of paints. We have burnt sienna, deep red, deep yellow, green oxide, phthalo blue, raw umber, and titanium white. And then of course we have our palette and our picture. The instructions we need I have the pattern and my pencil and carbon paper and canvas here, along with a couple of uh, containers of water, and then of course my paintbrushes and lots and lots of paper towels. Okay, let's get started here. Step one calls for us to trace the pattern onto the canvas. We'll use that with our carbon paper placed carbon pick side down on the canvas. Then we lay our pattern on top, lining up the edges of the paper as well as we can with the edges of the canvas. And then we just take a pencil or a pen and we trace the lines. And then the carbon paper will allow those lines to show up on our canvas. And that's how we have the basic outline of what we're going to be painting. Most of this, will get covered up by paint. Um, so you want to press firmly, but not really hard. We want to be able to see it on the canvas, but we don't want it really hard to cover with the paint either. So I'll join you again in just a couple minutes after I finish tracing. Have fun. I wanted to mention just as I'm finishing up here, tracing my pattern, that um, since the carbon paper isn't quite big enough to cover the entire canvas all at once, when you need to move it, I anchor my pattern in place and then I reach underneath and I just move the carbon paper to the area that I need it in so that I can continue tracing what I hadn't been able to reach before with the carbon paper. So that's one way of maintaining the lines that you've already traced, but being able to move the carbon paper so you can trace the rest of it. All right, here we go. Our pattern is traced onto the canvas and now it's ready to start painting. Okay. We're ready for step one here, which is to use a flat brush to mix phthalo blue with titanium white to make the blue background for our picture. The instructions call for three parts blue or three parts blue with nine parts white. And what they just mean is that for every time you dip, actually I'm going to use my paper plate. Every time you dip your brush in the blue, do that three times. You want to do that nine times for the white. 
So I'm actually not going to get that brush dirty. I'll go ahead and use this one. One, two, three. And you, of course, can mix this to the color that you prefer. I mean, if you want it a little bit lighter, go right ahead. If you want it a little bit darker, go right ahead. Um, I'm actually, I think the instructions call for you to add more white towards the middle of the painting. And then I think I'm going to add a little bit of darker blue around the outside just to give more of a contrast. But um, but you can paint it however you want. Add a little bit more white to this. Um, I'm also going to use a slightly smaller. Well, I'm going to use this bigger brush for the big parts. But I'm also going to use a smaller brush when I get up close to the leaves and the branches and things because I don't want to, this is a pretty dark color and I don't want to go over the lines, um, particularly in the leaf part um, because the paint for the leaves is so much lighter and I don't want, um, I don't want to have to try and cover up this really dark or this, this blue when I'm using you know, like yellow and green for for the leaves. So let me just work on this, and uh, and I'll be back. All right, I finished step one. I painted in the blue background. Um, I tried to use more white in the center to brighten it up, and I actually I added some of the darker blue, the phthalo blue around the edges, just to give more of a, a shading difference there. Um, I also tried to be very careful around the outlines of the acorns and the leaves, um, because we're going to be painting the insides of the leaves with a lighter color, and it would be harder to cover up if I uh, went over the lines into that area, since uh, the blue is a darker color. All right, the next step is to use a dry brush method, which is you just take a brush that's dry and you dip it in the paint just a little bit, and then you take that and apply it to the center of the leaves here. Just a little a hint of the of this color here. Uh, you don't want to use any water or anything. That's what the dry brush method is. And I don't want it to be too overpowering in the leaf coloring. So I'm just going to do a little bit. You can see in the picture, there's just a, a hint of the green here. Just sort of following along these lines here. And then branching out a little bit from there. Okay, rinse the brush, let it dry, 
You don't want to wait for it to dry on its own. You can certainly use a hair dryer to dry that. So I'll be with you in a minute when this is dried. All right, the next part of step two is to use the bright, the deep yellow to paint the entire leaf, every leaf covering the green oxide center. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go right up to where the blue borders the leaves, but try not to go over. If you do go over, as I did, here's a, an easy little hint. Just wet a little bit of your paper towel and you can just kind of brush that away. If you do it while the paint is still wet, it's a lot easier to take that away. Okay, I'll join you again when that's done. Okay, just finishing up the yellow. Now it says to rinse the brush again. That can be a pretty color green there. Okay, brush, brush is rinsed. And now it says to use the same brush and deep red to dry brush. Oh, not this. So not this brush. It wants me to dry brush. So again, I want to grab uh, a new brush that is dry, and then just dip it in the paint a little bit, and um, dry brush the portions of the leaf as it shows in the picture in that step. So we're looking at step two here. Uh, it says to um, refer to the photo for color placement. And since we're going to dry brush, we don't want the brush to get wet with water. We just want to be paint on a dry brush. So I'm going to go ahead and it should blend a bit with the yellow, I believe. So I'm going to give that a try. Gonna do it's gonna give it more texture because we're dry brushing. I'm trying to have my brush strokes show a bit of the contour from of the leaf as well here. Okay, we've got that done, and that is the end of step two. All right, so I finished with the red and all of step two, 
And now it's time to move on to step three. Step three asks us to use a number eight bright brush to mix three parts deep yellow with three parts titanium white. So I went ahead and I added approximately equal amounts of the yellow and the white here. So I've got my mix here and um, it wants us to dry brush again. So again, uh, using a dry brush with no water and then uh, to do some highlights. And it's hard to tell exactly where they're adding the highlights here, but I'm just going to sort of giving the illusion of the I think where the um where the veins of the leaves would be, I think. Use smaller strokes because that seemed like that was a little bit too much. To make some of the colors not as vivid if you prefer to have them a little more muted, like some of this red. You want to just tone down a little bit. Looks like we get the leaf a little bit more definition. Okay, so here's that in the step three. All right, step four says to use the number eight bright brush in burnt sienna, that's our brown here, to paint the underside of the upper right leaf and the shadow of the acorns, and then to rinse the brush. So let's see. Shadow would be this part. So it doesn't say I need to dry brush this. So I'm going to go ahead and add some water to my brush. Make it a little bit easier to follow the contours of the particularly the um the underside of the acorns. If your paint seems to be a little bit too thick, always feel free to mix it with a little bit of water. Add a little bit of water um, to loosen it up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to flow when you're painting. As you can see, it's unable to spread it a little bit easier. Now, it won't be quite as thick, so you may need to use two coatings to get it to cover everything that you need it to cover, but, but it will spread more easily in the tight areas.
Okay, now we rinse the brush. And then we're going to use two parts of phthalo blue with two parts of titanium white to dry brush over the shadows. So the shadows will come out looking more blue as in the directions. Come out looking darker than your sky because your sky had nine parts titanium white. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Okay, and that is step four. All right, step five is to use the number eight bright brush and burnt sienna, again, our reddish brown, to paint the branches, acorns, center veins of the leaves, and loose outlines around the leaves, and then rinse the brush. So this is gonna take a while. I've chosen to use a slightly smaller brush to start with so I can get some of these smaller areas. And then I'll use a bigger brush to do the acorns. So have fun, take your time with this, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, I finished step five, painting the branches, the acorns, a little bit of outline of the leaves and inside the leaves. Um, I tried to use a technique here for the acorns to give them a little bit more detail uh, and texture because the tops of acorns are bumpy and the nut of the acorn is smooth so I tried to use very smooth brush strokes on the acorn part um, going in the same direction to give the illusion of being round and then I did more of a dabby um, uh, method of painting on the top parts of the acorns to give it that slightly lumpy uh, textured look so just a little um just a little hint, maybe if you want to try uh, try that and see if it makes a difference in how your painting looks. Um, on to number uh, step six, it says to use the number eight bright brush and raw umber, which is our dark brown here, to dry brush shadows on the branch and the acorns. Um, dry brushing again is using a dry brush and just the paint, not water. Um, to go ahead and apply the paint. Um, it calls for a number eight bright brush. I'm actually using something a little bit smaller um, because I wanna be able to get the details. And I just, I feel I have better control over something a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the shadow. If you look at the illustration here, pretty much 
on the left hand side of, of things is where it's showing it darker. So I'm going to have, go ahead and just add some shadows in here. Again, I'm going to use that same brush sort of technique. I'm going to just bounce the brush around and give it a textured look for the top part and still get, add the shadow, the shadow look as well. And then I'll use a smooth brush stroke here on the main nut of the acorn to give it that texture as well. Um, this isn't an exact science, so I may end up adding a little bit more of the raw sienna and kind of blending a little bit better here because I feel like I'm not really blending it very well. But I'm going to get the, the main part of it on there first and then we'll see. All right, I've added the shadows on the branch and the acorns. Again, I kind of used that uh, that technique to give a little bit of texture to the tops of the acorns. And um, now we're on to step seven, which is to use a, a number eight great brush to mix deep yellow and titanium white, and then dry brush highlights onto the branch and the acorns. So I'm going to use the same mix that I had for the highlights and the leaves, because um, it's essentially the same. That was three parts deep yellow with three parts titanium white. And then um, I'm going to look at the picture here on our step-by-step -step here, and I'm going to see where they added these kinds of highlights. And then I'm going to try and um, try and uh, duplicate that a little bit. Again, I'm going to use that kind of bouncy, bouncy type brush stroke to give the texture. And I think a little bit of this is going to go a long way, so I don't want to, I don't want to add too much. Just wherever you think the light's going to hit. Gonna hit the tops of the acorns here. And if I don't like the effect, I'll go back, I'll use the burnt sienna, I'll repaint the top, and then I can reapply the highlights as well. Okay, so I'm going off this way. So I'm just dabbing a little bit with my brush. And I'm using a pretty small brush. And I think the point of the dry brushing is because um, when you're not using water, then what the, the paint that you're applying isn't isn't mixing with the color underneath. It's actually just going on top. So that way you can preserve your your separate colors. Does that make sense? Again, I'm going to use. Um, contoured brush strokes here to give the illusion of roundness. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to say 
I'm done. End of step seven. All right, and here we have the finished painting, Acorn Trio. Thank you for joining me for this Art with Flair program. I hope that you enjoyed painting the painting and learning about the dry brushing technique, which we use quite a lot of in this painting. Um, I hope that you join me again for the next Art with Flair, which I am planning, uh, which I'm scheduling for January of 2021. In the meantime, thank you from the Hub at the Grace Lake Area Public Library. Take care, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.